Hello friends. It's you know very refreshing to see you all back every time you come back with an expectation that something fresh will be available uh, and uh, I will give you a new and fresh idea on uh, things uh, that are on the table for discussion. Newton's first law. Oh yes. Newton's first law. That's, that's the thing we are going to discuss right now. What exactly Newton saw and why did he say that in his first law, uh, the thing that an object at rest, an object at rest remains at rest till an external force acts on it. See this, an object at rest remains at rest till an external force acts on it is just a sub clause or you can say a particular case of the general version of the Newton's first law. This is very easy to understand you see. It's, it's extremely easy to understand that, you know, an object at rest will remain at rest till an external force acts on it as if, you know, it's, it's your brain. It's your brain. It's at rest. It remains at rest. It does not move and uh, it keeps at, uh, keeps remaining at rest till an external force acts on it. Just for jokes, but see. The general version of the Newton's first law says that an object maintains its state of motion. Now see this particular thing. An object maintains its state of motion if no external force acts on it. Now, what exactly is a state of motion? State of motion means if an object is at rest, it remains at rest. This is the very simplest and the first clause. Secondly, if the object is in motion, then it will remain in motion without any change of its state variables. What are the variables of motion? We have seen in kinematics that velocity, acceleration. Now, velocity, acceleration, these are the parameters of motion. If, if no external force acts, then no acceleration would be available and if no acceleration acts on the object that means the particle remains in motion with a constant velocity. So therefore you can say maintaining its state of motion can have an alternative idea, a simpler idea that, a simpler idea that which Newton emphasized as his Newton's first law or as his first law of motion. Mm. Newton's first law of motion. He said that, he said that an object, an object remains at rest if it was at rest, an object remains at rest if it was at rest or keeps moving with a constant velocity and velocity is a vector, please remember, keeps moving with a constant velocity if it was moving, if it was moving with a 
fixed velocity unless an external force acts on it now see this see these two sentences see these two particular descriptions an object remains at rest if it was at rest that means there was no force applied there was no acceleration so its velocity was zero and it remained zero or else if it was moving with a velocity let's say v that velocity will remain fixed it was moving with a fixed velocity uh, it will keep moving with a fixed velocity unless an external force acts on it unless means if no external force acts on it now that means this is very easy to understand the force being a product of mass and acceleration if you provide force to an object it would accelerate accelerating means it would change its velocity this is pretty simple to understand now see the problem with the first law with the first law if we look at a certain event now uh, that event can be observed from uh, within the frame from outside the frame and in that case let's say let's say let's say i have i have a car let's say i have a car and inside the car let's say inside the car there is an object which is hanging and there is a passenger who is a seated there is a passenger who is seated and this particular passenger is observing this passenger is observing this hanging object and let's say uh, this is the front of the car so this is the front of the car and the car is moving this side with a velocity v and this is let's say passenger p and there is one more passenger or there is one more person let's say this person is standing on the ground and let's say this person is q and this person is outside and standing on the ground now i have two simple persons one who is seated inside the car and the other person q who is standing on the ground the simplest query here is if this car is moving ahead with the velocity v look at the query if the car let, let me write down here this is the car and if the car is moving ahead with the velocity v this object of mass m this object hanging from the ceiling of mass m is it moving <laughs> now what would be your answer if you were inside the car and what would be your answer if you are outside the car now this is just an example and just an example to understand what to understand let me remind you the newton's first law this is newton's first law on the table inside the car observed and outside the car observed is the hanging mass moving what would p say p says let's call this object as let's say uh, a mass m object says mass m is not moving why because it is remaining in its in its position hanging still as long as the car is moving with a constant velocity let's say this v is a constant velocity and that means acceleration uh, it implies acceleration of the car is let's say zero if this is the case then this object is moving and is moving along the car but from inside the car and this is where we come with a new term we 
are introducing a new physics term and that term is called frame. And what is frame? Frame is let's say a position of view. A position of view or a window of view. Of what? What are you viewing? Of an event. And what is the event? That the object is hanging from the ceiling of the car. The object is hanging from the ceiling of the car and it's moving horizontally along the car. As the car is moving, the object is moving. It's not accelerated. Is any force acting on the object along the horizontal direction? No. Along the horizontal direction, fx is zero. Along the horizontal direction, no force is acting. And hence this mass is not accelerated and this mass is moving along the car and the car is moving with a constant velocity. So this object is moving with a constant velocity and is not accelerated. All this is true for observer Q. Q says, Q says, unlike P, P, what was P saying? P was saying that the mass M is not moving. Not moving with respect to whom? That is important to say. Now let's complete this. With respect to himself or herself. With respect to himself or herself, which we call as the observer. This P is the observer. With respect to the observer, this is not moving. So that means this mass is remaining static. It's not moving. But for Q, what is happening? Q says that M is moving. Now see the difference. M is moving with a velocity V as good as the velocity of the car and then that means m is moving and is moving along with the car now consider an example a mosquito let's say got trapped inside the cabin of the car while you are seated though the mosquito may you know drone from his this place to this place and move around your ears your head but should keep moving within the cabin of your car an important example though very complicated the mosquito is a passenger along with you if you are inside the cabin and the mosquito is inside the cabin of the car and the car is let's say moving at 60 kilometers per hour mosquito has no trouble it keeps moving within the cabin of the car car accelerates gains a higher speed let's say 70 kilometer per hour still the mosquito has no problem what is it that keeps the mosquito moving with you with you inside the cabin as if even if it is seated on a position let's say the mosquito gets gets seated on the glass or let's seated on the seat or besides you very obediently and quietly without you disturbing him or he disturbing you the mosquito keeps moving as good as you are moving and with the velocity of the car you the driver and the mosquito all the three are moving what is it that's happening? Is the car moving? Yes, the car is moving with respect to the ground. Now that car is now a frame in which you are seated, you are positioned and your frame is the car. And with respect to you, the car is not moving. With respect to car, you are not moving. Now this is where you and your car are at the same speed, same velocity, and hence you people have no relative velocity or zero relative velocity or zero relative acceleration. And hence it appears that you are moving with the car or you are seated inside the car and not moving, 
but a ground observer, an observer from outside the car, what would that person observe? That as the car is going, the passenger is going and also, you know, do not forget, the mosquito is also going. That makes an amazing thing, man. The person outside is observing that this car is moving and this ball is moving and this passenger is moving, everything is moving with the car. And that means... Q will say that M is moving and P will say that M is not moving. Now, this is the difference. Q is in the ground frame. Q is in the ground frame. And P is in the car frame. The frame of the car. And that means frame makes a difference. Now, let's get back to Newton's first law. Let's get back to Newton's first law. What did Newton's first law say? That an object at rest remains at rest if no external force acts on it. And P finds the first law very much valid. <laughs> but what does Q say? Q says that an object which was moving with a constant velocity keeps moving with a constant velocity if no external force acts on it for both of them the first law holds and i repeat here p finds that the object is at rest let me write down for p the object is at rest for p the object is at rest and for q the object moves with a constant velocity with a constant velocity and you see this happens and this also happens object is at rest and remains at rest because no external force along this direction acts on it and the car removes with a constant velocity does not accelerate but what does Q say? Though the object is moving, but keeps moving with the constant velocity along the same direction with the velocity with which it was moving earlier. And uh, that means no external force is acting. And that's true. No external force is acting on the object. That means for both of them, the Newton's first law, the Newton's first law for both of them holds good for both of them. Newton's first law holds good and there is no trouble. The trouble would come in at a situation where there would be acceleration. Assume for a moment that the car accelerates and that means the frame is applying a force on home on all the particles of this particular system and that means the person is experiencing the force of the engine, the mass is experiencing the force of the engine and what happens? What happens is this mass, while it was hanging vertical, after the car accelerated, slightly shifts to the back side. And that means after acceleration, the object shifts to the back side. Yes, you are observing it right. You are observing it right. The car accelerated forward and the object moved backward. What happened? Suddenly, what happened? Something bad happened. The bus, you are seated in a bus, the bus accelerates forward and what happens? You feel pressure on your back as if your chair or your seat is pushing you forward while you maintain the first law. You were an object at rest, you remained at rest because no external force acted on you. But who is the force acting on? The bus because of its engine. The engine is applying a force on the seat and the seat is applying a force on you and you feel a pressure on your back. The seat is pushing you forward while you are seated and immediately suppose the bus breaks, the bus decelerates, it, it slows down. What happens? You suddenly feel like you are pushed forward. Why? Because you were having a motion of acceleration and you retained that motion because no force was acting directly on you. Instead, the bus decelerated means the bus applied a force backside. It slided backside relatively and you slided forward and as if you are now feeling that 
you are being pushed to the forward when the bus breaks. If this experience is what you share, then that means you are on the right page of observation. That means we can talk a more. RN Talks Physics will bring you more in the next part on Newton's second law. Thank you. See you.